Hi scholars welcome to our channel Academia Unlimited with me Abhimanyu Singh Today I have brought for you a short story written by myself The title of this short story is The Darken of Dhunana This story is based on the social evil of darken pratha or witch hunting which was practiced in Rajasthan since time immemorial So here we go let us listen to this short story the darken of dhunana rajasthan possesses two beautiful and contrasting landscapes the desert and the lush green aravli mountain chain dhunana was a picturesque tiny little village located in the lap of these very aravli mountains it was perched along the left slope of a deep valley created millions of years ago by the incessant flow of the mighty banas river if one looked up above in the direction of the village from the banks of banas one could hardly discern the village settlements for the entire habitation was covered in thick foliage of gigantic imli people and mango trees all around the village there was a dense jungle and thus it was quite difficult for the naked eye to differentiate between the woods and the village moreover the village was exclusively inhabited by the bheels that great people who live in the lap of nature and are often called the vanputras it was the year ad 1901 and it turned out to be a very difficult year large parts of rajasthan which was then known as rajputana were affected by a severe famine grain became impossible to procure as all storage vessels went empty and the prices soared high into the sky the inhabitants of dhunana fared no better and were soon engulfed in the deadly grip of the famine hunger and misery became the order of the day and everyone realized that if the situation was so grim in the spring months tough times would lay in their fate ahead during the excruciatingly hot summer months when mother nature unleashes her wrath on all and sundry the ill effects of the akal or famine were being felt now on the animal population as well cattle began wearing a poor emaciated look and it became equally distressing for procuring food and fodder for them bhima a young bheel man of around 20 years age was one unexpected guest at this tiny village of thunana he was a sepoy in the british indian army currently serving in the deccan and had been fortunate enough to get a leave for a month after some hard fought military campaigns Bhima had waited for this moment since years when he would dart back to his heavenly abode the place where his roots belonged his home that tiny village located atop aravallis however he was unfortunate in the sense that his much awaited visit happened at a time when his home was under severe stress Bhima soon understood that his visit to his village was certainly not welcome. His own family was not the least delighted to see him return at such a troublesome time. The very next day after Bhima's arrival, his father and his uncle asked him bluntly, "Hey Bhima, when do you plan to go back to the barracks?" Bhima retorted to their cold and calculative response to his visit and said that he has no plans of going back until the feast of holi and he would delay his departure further if any more of such unwelcome questions would be hurled at him his sharp wit shut everyone's mouth and made it clear to them that he will stay here for as long as he wants even if it meant more hardships for them in feeding another mouth bima would spend the day doing things which he loved doing when he was a kid of around 10 years age he would go racing to the mountain tops in the early morning and dash back on the slopes 
feeling the wind in his face. He would feel like a bird during those athletic bouts. Later during the day, he would go and sit atop one of the most intimidatingly huge banyan tree which was, according to the folk legends, 10,000 years old. Bhima recalled how in his childhood one of the biggest fears among the children of Dhunana was to get eaten up by the offshoots of that huge banyan tree. To his surprise, on this visit Bhima realized that this tree was not as big as it appeared to be when they were kids. Since adolescence, when Bhima started touring different parts of India as a soldier, he came across much larger banyan trees as well as trees of other species. Being a Bheel, Bhima was most comfortable in the forests and he thanked God for showing him the most grandiloquent of the jungles of India, from Arakan to Himalayan Tarai and from the Nilgiris to the Vindhyas. While Bhima was immersed in these thoughts and smiling to himself over his vagabond travelling through dense jungles and ravines, he fell fast asleep as he lay curled over one of the heavy and bodily branches of that tree, just like a baby sleeps in the lap of his mother. When Bhima woke up, he heard some hysteric shouts from the village below. The village was too far and thus the noises could not be easily comprehended. He sprang into action and ran towards Dhunana. As he approached the village, the voices became audible and it appeared that the shrieks were let out by a woman, accompanied by yells and shouts by a group of people who comprised of both men and women. Finally, when Bhima entered Dhunana, he was shell-shocked to see what flashed before his eyes. He saw a group of Dhunana residents, both men and women, brutally beating up a woman while pulling her from her hair. The woman was beaten black and blue and had almost lost her consciousness. Bhima could not make out who she was because of her dishevelled appearance and also because her hair were covering up her face. By now, more villagers had flocked to the scene and had surrounded the scene of action in a circular way, as they would normally do on auspicious occasions while watching a public performance. Bhima tried to gather what was happening. He lurked close to one of his cousins and asked, Kai Velo, what is happening? To which his brother replied, Dakan Milgaili, they have found the Dakan. Just as he uttered this revelation, the woman who was being beaten up lay prostrate on the ground with blood oozing out of her arms and feet. Bhima could now see her face and was speechless when he recognized her. The woman was Heti, his childhood companion. Bhima and Heti were close to each other since childhood. In their adolescence, they had confessed eternal love for each other and had taken vows to remain inseparable. Alas, fate had something else in store for them. Bhima lost two of his brothers when they had gone out hunting wild boars. He was the only able male breadwinner for the family and so he had to take up some rewarding profession. He was taken into the Bhil Corps on recommendation of a powerful Bheel village headman of a nearby village. The adversity of his circumstances had coerced Bhima to abandon his love interest. Heti's love for the young lad was so pristine, so pure and so selfless that she did not even complain. Both of them met for one last time at the great banyan tree. Heti asked him, Will we ever meet again? Bhima's throat dried up as he was thinking of how to answer. He was still a boy at heart and was so innocent that he could not even approximate the distance that would now separate the two. 
he replied. But of course, we shall meet as soon as I return. Even in his wildest nightmares, Bhima could not have imagined this painful manner in which he was confronted with Haiti again. In Bhima's absence, Haiti had started a life where she was completely divorced from her own inner self. She had sent all her senses, desires and aspirations with Bhima far, far away from herself that day during their last meeting next to the banyan tree. After a few years of that unhappy event, Haiti was betrothed to another Bheel boy of her age. This was the beginning of Haiti's doom. After a lapse of only a few months, that boy eloped out of Dhunana with another woman who was six years senior to him and a mother of two children. Haiti was already pregnant by then. Close relatives of the boy blamed poor Haiti for not keeping her new groom in good humour and not satisfying him enough to earn his fidelity. From here started a dangerous tendency which would cost Haiti too dear eventually. The villagers started holding Haiti's destiny responsible for all the untoward instances affecting them. The beginning had been already made when Haiti's husband abandoned her. When that man and his newfound love were on the run, both of them were drowned in the mighty Banas. Rather than treating this accident as a punishment for the lust and greed of those two characters, people of Dhunana held Haiti responsible for this mishap. The pain and anguish of Bhima's loss had made Haiti numb. She had receded into her own space and became a mental recluse. Her inaction in dealing with those people who had ill will for her had a snowball effect. She never bothered to shut all those mouths which talked behind her back. The fiery sensation caused by Haiti's broken marriage had not even been doused when she suffered a miscarriage. It was another blow to the rapidly deteriorating life of that poor, devastated soul. And it was very painful. Hethi had to actually see the face of her dead child. Or rather, she was made to see the lifeless baby delivered prematurely. After this, Hethi became a scapegoat for the people of Dhunana. And those very people became ghosts for her. They became two different entities, completely disconnected from each other. Finally, the Akal made matters go out of hand. Each household was suffering unbearable strain and survival became a challenge. People were forced to abandon their families and escape to the towns or cities. Cattle started perishing and so did the water bodies of the region. Eventually, a number of newborn babies died during the horrible summer months. This loss and this suffering escalated the temper of the villagers to a boiling point. Rumours started spreading that the village of Dhunana was infested with a darken or a witch. This ill-fated life at Dhunana was a curse from a devil, a darken, a witch, staying among them, so thought all of them. The day Bhima was woken up from his sweet sleep was the day when a group of overzealous, desperate and unnerved villagers declared Haiti to be that devil, that darken. This news spread like wildfire and the despondency of the villagers ignited their superstitions, killing any inkling of reason or sympathy. Everybody rushed to purge their dwelling of this curse. They barged into Haiti's home, a tiny little hut situated at the end of Dhunana, looted whatever little belongings she had and physically assaulted her. Haiti received them all as if 
she was waiting for this to happen. That evening, it was decided by the village council that Hethi would be burnt alive the very next morning, as was the custom. The Bheels believed in existence of witches called Dakans, who were evil spirits which took human forms and spread havoc and destruction. They needed to be found out and exterminated immediately for ensuring that life returns back to normal in the affected area. Hethi's status as a witch was confirmed by the Bhopa or the priest singer who was summoned specially for this purpose. In the late evening, Hethi was tied to a pole in the village courtyard and kept under vigil by two chaukidars or guards. Bhima was disturbed. Nothing in his life had mentally disturbed him as much as this incident did. Neither the loss of his brothers, nor the men who died at his hands or in his hands. He retired to the grand old banyan tree because that was the only place on this whole planet where he could seek some solace. He was lost in his own mind. A part of him wanted to return back to fr- the place he came from. He wanted to turn a blind eye to what was happening. He thought that he no more belonged to Dhunana because ever since his return to his homeland, he had been feeling like an outsider. His life was at the barracks where he should return now. He had no business in the affairs of Dhunana. Another part of him and the part which was far more sensible understood what had landed Hethi in this situation. Rather, who had landed her into this misery? It was a beautiful moonlit night when Bhima was thinking to himself all night long, trying to measure Hethi's pain. The Aravli jungle was not as quiet that night as it used to be on other regular nights. The rustling of leaves by the blowing wind had a unique restlessness. The cooing of the peahen was sad and melancholic. Just as Bhima was looking around to observe the depth of that moment in a silvery black jungle, his eyes rested on a tree hole in that grand banyan tree. Many years ago, Bhima had gifted Hethi an amulet, handcrafted by him, and she had placed it in that tree hole because she could not carry it back home. Bhima and Hethi had decided to recover this necklace on the night of their reunion. Bhima fell weak in his knees. A chilling sensation ran down his spine, anticipating the recovery of the amulet right there. He began digging the sludge deposited in that tree hole like a lunatic. He reached the bottom of the pit and suddenly a slim piece of metal touched the tip of his finger. He found his amulet and also all his answers. The next morning, when the villagers started congregating at the village courtyard, it was their turn to be stunned. The two Chaukidars had been shot by poisoned arrows and the witch had flown away. The end. So scholars, I hope you must have enjoyed this short story, The Darken of Dhunana. Please do like and share the video and also subscribe to our channel Academia Unlimited for more fun. Thanks. Have a nice day.